Hi, my name is Joshua. I'm 22 years old. I am mentally okay. I'm physically disabled. Joshua is in his, going into his third year of college. He's very driven to do what everybody else wants to do. If you ask him what, you know, what do you want to do in life? He'll just say, I want to get a job. I want to be like everybody else. My name is Mitzi Prophet. I am the mother of Joshua, who is 22 year old, who has a developmental disability. And I live in South Georgia. I'm Jack Prophet and I'm a retired coal miner from Virginia. Joshua's stepdad. Joshua was um, born on due date. After he was born, he wasn't given enough oxygen, so at that time I really had no idea what it was going to be like to have a child with special needs. Had never even been around anybody who had a child with a disability. Um, three months in, we had seen many doctors, and at that time I was told by a neurologist that he was very um, blunt. He just looked at me and said, um, take him home and love him. He's going to be a spastic quadriplegic, severely mentally retarded. And I can remember just leaving there thinking, oh my gosh, how can you make a judgment on something that's three months old? After he was born, of course, he had, we went through the process, he had Medicaid. The services in West Virginia were awesome. So I stayed there for 10 years. I knew when we moved to Georgia that there was Medicaid waivers um, and there was, that gives you services. Medicaid gives Joshua insurance, support staff that helps in his everyday life, not every other week, not a weekend break. It's every day. He has full care, which means that you got to get him up, dress him, shave him, um, bathe him. Um, I usually arrive here at his home at 8 o'clock in the morning. I will help him get ready. Getting me up, brushing my teeth, dressing good, um, the normal. And we will leave to go to school and arrive at school and in class I will take notes for him or even help him study for a test that he may have coming up. I love the way he remembers pretty much everything. Uh, he helps me remember some things that I may forget. That boy can remember if he ever meets you he will never forget you and he we talked about what he could do and he wants to do radio broadcasting. I want to study radio broadcasting because I I think I had a neck for it. Joshua Prophet is on the line. Drivers you pigs usually finish in the top five. Joshua, do I have you on the phone, son? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> What's up, Junior Nature? He's learning that dream is not going to be easy, but he's learning that it's okay, that he's going to have to work for it. In five years, I hope to see myself on one of these sports radio networks. When you have a child with a disability, all you hear is everything they can't do. He'll never do this. He can't do this. He can't. And I'm like, okay, I, I got that. My journey is to help him get to his journey, and I could not be more proud. He is fixing to graduate with, a, he, like he said, I'm going to have two degrees. I said, well, I was just striving for you to get one. But it makes me proud that he's such an overachiever. He called me at work because it goes back to his visual impairment. He said, I need you to read an email. And I was like, okay, what is it? And he said, it's from the academic department. He thought I was in trouble. And I was like, you're not in trouble. You know, and I opened it up and I was like, oh my word, Joshua. Do you, can you not see what this is? I can't read it. And I said, you made the Dean's Merit List. And he goes, what does that mean? And I said, you got 3.5 GPA. Who does that? You did that he's doing everything he can and it is hard but it, it, this is Joshua's life God gave me Joshua for this journey for me to teach people and to teach him he has every right as the next person beside us he'll tell you don't cut my Medicaid or don't block grant me and if you ask him why he's gonna be like because I want a job like you have a job so if you block grant and you cap us I, and like I told Joshua, I said, your quality of life will go to, I don't even know. Because that, 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 that money helps us have his life. Joshua's life would be more tougher. It would be more harder hills to climb than it is now. 
how am I going to tell Joshua? And this is, it's so real that your dream can't be accomplished because I can't give you the support. He wants that job. Everybody wants a job. All he wants is a job. So I can't even understand how you would take away his dream. It's not about me. I will always support my son. But how can you expect me to tell him that you're cutting his Medicaid and all you're doing is cutting his dream? We don't want a handout. We just want the services to help him. So that's how I try to explain to somebody is it's a service to help him um, be productive. I know Joshua will achieve his dream if things stay as they are. If things go backwards, he will be devastated. But positive, Joshua will get his dream and he will be the one that tells this story of how he got to where he is because of the services he has now. When I think back today about him being 22 years old and being a young man, I'm like, oh my gosh, if people could just imagine what somebody told me when he was three months old that he has surpassed anything anybody would ever imagine. I want to do well, I don't want to fail. It's the best job that I ever had. I do whatever he needs, feeding, whatever it takes. And he just wants to, he wants to help people. I just love him dearly. He's like he's pretty much one of my kids. If he could help people and make people um, feel loving and, and, and wanted, he would he will always be happy. I can't be who I am without Medicaid. My simple mind, I just still can't understand why you want to cut this program. I, I don't get it. This has been a production of the Georgia Budget and Policy Institute.